Mike Moore Media, the first place to hear Rockingham County news and information. Rockingham County Today is sponsored by Tire Max, Total Car Care, five triad locations. First, this exclusive story. The Rockingham County Arson Task Force is investigating a fire at 1359 Angel Road in Madison. The call to 911 came in at 5.30 yesterday afternoon. The scene was cleared at 2.30 this morning, except for security still at the crime scene. The residence is a total loss. Two firefighters were injured, one treated at the ER at Cone, the other on site. A Wentworth Fire Department tanker truck en route to the fire overturned on Bethany Road. Two occupants were briefly entrapped. They were taken to Cone by EMS with minor injuries. An arrest has been made in a homicide that occurred five and a half years ago. Reedsville police, with assistance from NC State Highway Patrol, have arrested Spencer Thomas Fountain, 27 of Reedsville, and charged him with first-degree homicide in the death of Veronica Broadnax and discharge of a barreled weapon inside an occupied dwelling, resulting in serious injury. On November 14, 2015, officers responded to 811 Lindsay Street around 8 p.m. and found two victims with gunshot wounds. Broadnax, 30, deceased, another person taken to the hospital. Antonio Sherrod Scales, 45, of Reedsville, was arrested and charged with voluntary manslaughter. Based on new information received yesterday, authorities arrested Fountain. He's under a $45,000 secured bond and will be in court today. Anyone with additional information pertaining to this case is asked to contact Reedsville Police or Crime Stoppers. Starting today, Rockingham County Division of Public Health vaccination clinics will be held at the Public Health Department in the Governmental Center NC65 Wentworth. Health Director Trey Wright says the partnership between Cone Health, Annie Penn, Rockingham Community College, and Health and Human Services has been phenomenal. With over 25% of the county fully vaccinated in a mass vaccination setting, smaller clinics can now be held at the health department while providing targeted outreach and satellite clinics throughout the county to vaccinate those unable to attend a mass vaccination site. Every Thursday this month, county public health will be providing Pfizer vaccines on site to individuals 16 and older. To sign up for an appointment, visit this website, rockinghamcountydhhs.org. And that's the news. I found a comment on social media I want to share with you. We have been Lane's family pharmacy customers for 10 years. Keith and Kevin Lane make a point of knowing each customer by name. Also, all family members. Prescription transfers are easy. Call Keith or Kevin. Give them your prescription number. They will do the rest. No refills left? No problem. Keith or Kevin will contact your doctor for a refill. If there's a problem, Keith or Kevin will call you. I notice the Lane brothers are mentioned four times in this post, and that's really the message here. You can depend on them at Lane's Family Pharmacy, NC14 Eden. For countywide delivery, call this number, 336-627-4600. Now Rockingham County weather, mostly sunny, high 68, low 44, Friday a 40% chance of rain, high 65, for the weekend sunny, high Saturday 70, Sunday 80, Monday a 60% chance of rain, high 76. Triad record highs and lows on this day, 91, 1950, 36, 1973. Get current weather information anytime at MikeMoore.media, along with Rocking Cam, our live stream weather camera, sponsored by Heat and Air Controllers, for year-round comfort, whatever the weather. Need a tow? Dave's Towing is a call away, 24 hours a day, at this number, 336-932-7478. 
Quicken Loans presents the Sports Flash, driven by Jeep on Mike Moore Media. The Charlotte Hornets home tonight to take on the Chicago Bulls. Hornets coming off a three-point win against Detroit Tuesday are 5-5 five and five over their last 10 games. They'll play their next five at home and are eighth in the Eastern Conference standings. NHL, the Carolina Hurricanes home in Raleigh tonight to face the Chicago Blackhawks. Canes have won five in a row and are looking for the three-game sweep of Chicago, who they beat on Tuesday 6-3. to three. Carolina with three games remaining on the regular season. The Atlanta Braves defeated the Washington Nationals 5-3 to three in D.C. Wednesday night. It's Scoring four runs in the third inning behind a grand slam from Marcella Zuna. Wilson Contreras added a solo shot. Max Fried went five innings, giving up one run with six strikeouts. He goes to one and one. The Braves go for the sweep this afternoon. For lightning fast updates as news happens, download the Score app today. It's free. I'm Tony Desiri, and that's your Sports Flash on Mike Moore Media. Podcast this morning on Mike Moore Media, Lee Mitchell at the Madison Med and Recreation Department around 9.30, Judy Yarborough with the City of Reedsville around 10.30. Now the Community Calendar, sponsored by Night Owl National Stoneworks in Eden, Granite, Quartz, and Marble for commercial and residential. Free Pick Fest at Governor Moorhead Park in Eden, tomorrow with Grammy Award winner Dom Flemons and pick students at 6 to 9, limited admission, tickets at eventbrite.com. Eden Parks and Recreation and Eden Kiwanis Club will sponsor a Hooked on Fishing Derby for kids 4 to 12, Saturday at the Fireman's Hut Pond, door prizes and trophies. The Grass Strings will be playing at the Sandy Ridge Community Center, NC704, Saturday at 6. Blood Drive at the Bethany Volunteer Fire Department, NC 65 Reedsville, Wednesday, May 12th, 3 to 7.30. Downtown Mayadan Spring Fling, Saturday, May 15th, 10 to 4. Food trucks, uh, food trucks, live music, and kids' activities. Sip and Shop in Uptown Eden, Saturday, May 15th, 12 to 4, featuring local vendors, advance tickets $10 at the event 15. The Legacy Motown Review will be at Blissful Ridge, Cherokee Camp Road, Reedsville, Saturday, May 22nd. Doors open at 6, show starts at 7. I'll have a special podcast with several people about this event today at 1.30. Hope you can listen to that for more information. If you have an event for the community calendar, text that to me at 336-932-1881 or email it to rockinghamcountync at gmail.com. Now, today's Consumer Report. As more states drop or relax their COVID-19 restrictions, President Biden is raising the nation's vaccination goals. Biden said he would like to see 70 percent of all Americans vaccinated against the virus by July 4th. So far, just under 50 percent of adults have received at least the first dose. If you're a frontline health care worker, start packing your bags. You could be taking a trip soon. United Airlines is rewarding hospital staff who work during the pandemic with millions of airline miles. The promotion will celebrate the 40th anniversary of United's Mileage Plus program. Cause supporting credit cards may be an emerging trend. Credit One Bank is partnering with national animal welfare nonprofit Best Friends Animal Society in a co branded credit card. The bank says the group will get 1% of every purchase. Human cardholders will get rewards as well. I'm Mark Huffman. Learn more at consumeraffairs.com. Today, it's the National Day of Prayer. It's also National Nurses Day and National Beverage Day. Let's check on some big-name birthdays. George Clooney, 60. Chris Paul, 36. Bob Seger, 76. Tony Blair, 68. Willie Mays, 90. And getting close to home, a couple of names for our birthday club, Jane Powers and Ralph Hamlet. Happy birthday to you, Jane Powers and Ralph Hamlet. I have the birthday club in this program about this time, Monday through Friday mornings. Text those birthdays anytime to 336-932-1881. We start out on Monday with Sunday and Monday names all through the week, then on Friday, Friday and Saturday, and we have a drawing 
on Friday, all seven days, and a really nice prize package from a number of Eden merchants. So get those names in for the birthday club. The person you tell us about just may be our lucky winner of the week. Now, today in history. The Hindenburg was an engineering masterpiece built by the Zeppelin Company in Germany during the 1930s. And at a time when flying a passenger plane across the Atlantic was a difficult and perilous journey, the great dirigibles crossed the ocean with serene and effortless grace. But the popularity of the Hindenburg was clouded in political controversy. Funds for its construction had come in large part from Germany's Nazi party. The United States, which controlled the only natural deposits of helium in the world, denied the Zeppelin Company access to this valuable gas. As a result, the Hindenburg was inflated with hydrogen, a far more flammable substance. In 1936 alone, the great airship traveled ten times across the Atlantic without incident. The afternoon of May 6, 1937, promised to be no different. Well, here it comes, ladies and gentlemen. We're out now, outside of the hangar, and what a great sight it is. A thrilling one. On hand to record There's the arrival of the Hindenburg at Lakehurst Naval Air Station in New Jersey that day was a young Chicago radio reporter named Herb Morrison. Instead, Morrison helped radio to broadcast one of modern history's great disasters as it suddenly unfolded in all its terrible glory. The back motors of the ship are just holding it uh, just enough to keep it from... It's burst into flames. Get it, Charlie. Get it, Charlie. It's fire and it's crashing. It's crashing terrible. Oh, my. Get out of the way, please. It's burning and bursting into flames and, and it's falling on the morning fast. And all the folks agree that this is terrible. This is the one of the worst catastrophes in the world. Oh, it's, 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 it's flashing 20, oh, four or 500 feet into the sky. And it, it's a terrific crash, ladies and gentlemen. The smoke and the flames now. And the flame is crashing to the ground, not quite to the mooring mass. All the humanity and all the fans are just screaming around here. I, I can't talk, ladies and gentlemen. Lakehurst, New Jersey. The German dirigible Hindenburg is on fire. How serious is the blaze cannot be determined at this time. But it is reported that the entire ship is involved. This bulletin is from the Press Radio Bureau. 35 passengers died in the explosion of the Hindenburg. Perhaps more incredibly, a few passengers survived. What caused the ship to ignite remains speculative to this day. What is certain is that the explosion signaled the death knell of the passenger airship industry. But even as Herb Morrison's eyewitness report that day chronicled the end of one era, it signaled the beginning of another, an age in which electronic media would routinely report shocking events in the moment that they occurred. That's our program today. Thank you for listening. Have a wonderful Thursday, friends. I remind you that life is short. Use today wisely, laugh often, and be sure to count your blessings.